Hause. Hi, I'm Mike, and in this video, I'm on a mission to rebuild our 30-year-old Aero Tow camping trailer after it nearly broke in half last summer. To learn more about this trailer, you can check out this video that I posted long before I even started its metamorphosis into an off-road trailer. In this video, you can learn how I installed a roof rack. So we've got a trailer this weekend. You can check out how it anchors our camp setup in this video. And then see how I broke it in half in this one. In this episode, Brad Davidson, with the help of Dave Wiggins, New Gen Nate, and Harry Wagner, put all the pieces together and I drive the rebuilt trailer out of the shop. About a quarter. So we just leave it there and well, have it be. We already did the perches. Yeah, so the on springs the... would be like this. Oh. Yeah, see how that's like if we laid it flat on the bandsaw, we just wouldn't get any no moss. Just a little there were a lot of little fiddly things that didn't quite work out of the box, like this spring hanger I got at Summit, which wouldn't sit centered on the frame. Fortunately, Brad had the tools and the ingenuity to modify it. And just bend it off now. Save the blade. That Ooh. last little bit, see? Nice. It's still a really clean cut. Yeah. What are you modifying that for? Um, so these weld-in washers actually have, it looks like they have a three-quarter or five-eighths button on them. Uh -huh. these, these are actually made on a punch. So these aren't like drilled out. They're actually punched out. So what happens is when the punch actually tries to go through it, you'll get a fraction of one side that's just a little bit smaller than the back ah. side. So if you notice, okay. so if you file that wedge oh, down yes. just a little bit, it fits right in. Yeah. And then we'll just press it and then we'll just burn them on and good to oh, go. Okay. Yeah. Dave did a ton of detail work and welding on the trailer in addition to his precision grinding and cutting off of old parts from the body. Check out Dave's adventures and projects on Instagram. He's at N.V. Wiggins. Ah! Whoa! You play so like, perfect. I that one. And then some will swivel these out. The frame, which Brad and Dave welded up in episode two, was then ready to find its forever home under the arrow tow box. What am I doing? Yeah, just wait. You know, momento. You're gonna go right, those, those two. Yeah. Okay. And then out of the way. Yeah. Okay. So now, so now we just, you and I will just. So we need to go this way just a tiny bit. All well, the fenders are touching. The other fenders. The big oh, fenders the are fenders. touching. Oh, yeah. It's sitting up on top on this one. And it's yeah. how bad can it? Because those flex. <laughs> Here, push this a little bit. Right there. Yeah. Don't even have to connect them. Just. Look at that. Boom, boom, I couldn't anyway because they're aluminum. There we go. That actually squared her up a little bit. But how's the front look? Paul says it's pretty good. Yeah, All Paul says it's okay, huh? See? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You'll get the spare off the forerunner. And... I think it's cool as hell. So it doesn't look long now, doesn't it? Does no. It? it looks perfect. It looks just the right length. Yeah, it's not long. There's enough room. Tongue, tongue still looks long. Tongue. <laughs> There's enough room for me to put a jack on it. Got the itch in the back. It turned out perfect. Oh, I know. I like it. Yeah. It was a real challenge finding the right parts for this. We spent a lot of time looking through Brad's treasure heap, as well as going to Summit Racing right at closing time. So, no. <laughs> So tell me your name. I'm Nate. Nate, and you're a welder. Yes, sir. And what are you doing? What are you doing for the trailer here? For the trailer, we're welding in some uh, some bungs for the spring perch. 
and um, why are you using the TIG welder for this? Um, because I haven't TIG welded in a long time, yeah. and uh, I just miss it, and it's absolutely unnecessary, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the welds look really nice, and so, so you do, what kind of welding do you mostly do? Uh, mostly mobile stick welding. Mobile stick welding. Yep. And why, why is TIG welding, what is different about TIG welding, sort of the short version? Um, much more precise. Mm-hmm. You have to really know what you're doing. Um, and it's, you, you're getting up close and personal. Um, you can manipulate the puddle a lot more easily. And if you do mess up, it shows up. So you gotta be on your game. So Brad tells me that you uh, won some competitions for your welding skills. Yep. Tell me about that. Um, so it started in high school and uh, kind of just went from there, from the regional level and then all the way up to state, one state, um, placed uh, sixth at nationals, which is held in Kentucky. And then after that, I got an invite to uh, compete for the world skills. And that's, that's an opportunity. So they find one guy from the U.S. to represent the U.S. to go, go to Russia and weld, weld for the U.S. So, yeah, it was a pretty cool thing to be a part of. Unfortunately, I didn't. I wasn't the one guy, um, but I was. But you were in the running, right? Competing with those guys. And so. uh, people are interested in seeing your work. Do you have a place they can check up on you on the internet? Yeah, the internet? I do. Uh, if you go on Instagram at newgen Nate, um, N E W G E N N A T E. Awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for your help. Yeah, it's much appreciated, and I'd, it'd be nice to have. Awesome work on it. Hopefully it doesn't get covered up by bolts and stuff. Yeah, so I, I can know. Show people. Hopefully it stays open. And people, people can look at it and be like, why the heck did you TIG weld this? <laughs> yeah. And I'll try not to take credit for your work. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can see. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So here we are. This is day two of the trailer build project. And it's on the frame. The frame looks amazing. And we have the springs. And we have a bunch of parts over here. And we're going to go over to Summit and we're gonna find the parts to marry the truck springs with the trailer axle, which is not easy. Probably would have been easier to just go with the trailer springs, but. Possibly, but why why would we, right? But why would we? Why would we make it easy? We're not going, this ain't easy. We need to make, so the springs came off of Harry's old Toyota. (laughs) Shocks came off of Harry's old Toyota. These spring hangers were like some custom thing that some dude made for uh, his broken trailer one time, and then uh, everything else is just normal stuff, right? We got to yep. find bolts. Laying out all the skittles to make sure we get them all, put them all together. <laughs> we know where another U bolt is at. Uh, there it is. Sitting around somewhere. Yep. So we got our trailer here, and you can see the frame. We got a gap for the tire in the front there. We have an extended coupler, so it'll be easy to back up. And everything else is the same. We're going to put the same axle on it, same tires, and uh, hopefully, not too much longer, we will have a working actual trailer. Woo-hoo. We'll see. It's going to be fun. They'll probably sit like that unsprung, right. you know what I mean? And then by the time they're already fully sprung, they can be over to here. Right. So we usually just count that. I just usually measure this radius and how far the spring will actually travel. So. If we grab this guy, this is how I usually do is I grab one point to make it where it's not a movable object. And then what we can do is... Oh, I see. So usually what I'll do is we could do it right here in the middle. So we have a one foot mark here. So then you get, and I'm about 165, 170. So we're looking at, right now at a zero mark. So with me on it, and then I'll try to reciprocate the... The leaf a little bit so it looks like we're getting about two inches of flexion roughly mm-hmm. so and that's with a you know a pressed load so we start jumping up and down obviously right. you're you're magnifying how much weight is pushed on the spring so if we're going two inches so if we can kind of grab this little guy and this is how you know if you got a long enough one so you pretty much just kind of envision that here so if this is on a fixed point and you move this two inches so you can see how that angle is still pretty good and then if we actually go unsprung which is this is pretty much unsprung at this point but then you have the weight of the axle which will actually pull it a little bit forward so i 
think this is going to work. These should work pretty good. And I think if they cam just a little bit more, we should be all right. So, I mean, when me jumping up and down was probably about 250 pounds applied onto the spring, maybe yeah. if I was jumping a little bit harder. So, I think we're going to be good. We could go with a little bit longer one, but I think we're going to be good. And that's we can an start easy, with these. Yeah, I'm just an easy fix. We can just, we'll just order one that's a little bit longer. Yeah. The neat thing is, is they make all aluminum ones for circle track with a bunch of holes in them, so you can yeah. actually like tune. Yeah. So we could, and if we need to, we can just go you with tune a pair it and of those. then cut it off. Yep. Okay. Cool. Well, that Sweet. seems simple enough. Yeah, I think we're gonna be Gouda, like the cheese. What's that? Was he pumped about the exhaust? So we have here axle, our new springs. We went and got U-bolts. We went and got spring hangers. And um, we have everything else we need. Look at these things. And look. <laughs> Holy moly. So Nate was here and decided to weld these for us. We weren't going to weld them at all, but he insisted. Golly. So that's awesome. So we're about to start the process of fitting the axle and spring assembly under the trailer. And to do that, we want to get it loaded and see where the springs flex to before we actually tack everything on, weld everything on. <clears throat> so we've got um, the shackles in the rear mocked up and we're getting the shackles in the front mocked up. Well, they're not shackles, they're spring hangers in the front mocked up. And then when that's all good and a little bit tight, not super tight, We'll um, then lift the trailer up, put the wheels on the axle, roll it under there, get it in position, lower the trailer back down on it, see where it flexes, and then uh, mark the frame for drilling or for welding, all that stuff together, and then that, that will be almost pretty close to uh, completion there. Finito. Woohoo! <laughs> Shouldn't be too bad. Hop on the tongue, and I'm gonna hop on back here, wow. and we're gonna see how soft this thing is. Pretty soft. That's nice. But we're not even close to the boat back to the bottom right there. So, how much weight? You're definitely gonna put 200 pounds of crap in here, yeah. huh? Yeah. So, we I think we're gonna need new shackles. So what we're doing now is we're trying to measure where the springs are gonna go so the axle is centered. And we also need to put the leads back in the springs that we thought were gonna to be too um, stiff. They're actually too loose. So we took a couple leaves out of the springs to make them then lighter. And then Harry cut the, the bolts short. So um, we may need to fix that before we go any further. Um, and Harry's went out and uh, we don't know where the leaves went to, so uh, we gotta find those. And you see this one, right? Oh, that's perfect. A little bit easier, huh, Henry? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, she's definitely a lot stiffer. Oh, I think when. All the nitro. It's good nitro. All the nitro. So, in case you need some, I got some little nitro pills. Nice. Something. So, I think. Let's do. The shocks we ended up using were much shorter than the ones you see Brad trying to place the here. But they're yellow too, wow. so you can't really tell from the I video. don't think. I think with these ones, if we got little shorty ones, I think these are just too long. Yeah. So, I. Well, we've got the um, overload springs on the axles now, and uh, this, the, um, the flex is about pretty perfect. So I think we're going to leave it with that. Bounce, bounce. As hard as you can, we'll see if we get it the bottom down. Huh? I think we're good. Um, what we've got it set up now is we've got the spring perches in the front and the shackle hangers in the back. We've got them clamped to the rails of the frame and measured and um, so now we're going to lower it down a little bit and we're going to wire wheel the paint off the shackle hangers 
and we're going to pull the bushings out so they don't get melted when we weld them. And then uh, B-Rad's going to weld those up to the back, weld them up to the front, and then we will have a trailer. Standard coupler for now in the front. Yeah, so it's uh, 250 wall. 250 wall, and then the rest is 120 wall. This thing is bolted down with nut certs. Got the wiring is a mess for now, but I just got to get that home and figure it out. The um, nice welds here, the gratuitous TIG welds. Yeah. It's got the same tires and axle it had before. Frame goes all the way back. Nice shackle springs with shocks, and then the, it's bolted. We get welded these tabs on. Well, he welded these tabs on to bolt it down. And then there's two tabs in the back, two tabs in the front. It's done. It's done. Do your way down now. So the only thing left was to back in the Forerunner, hitch it up, and take it out for some sweet burnouts in the parking lot. Yay. Well, we're done, and it's Miller time. <laughs> we tested it, it tows, it backs really well, going through the gutters, um, the, going through the bumps, it does really well. Um, it's amazing, and um, I even got the lights wired mostly correctly. For now, that's kind of a junk show, but um, I'm going to fix that up in the next couple weeks. So um, stay tuned. I'm going to help clean up in here, and then we're gonna, I'm going to go home, and uh, we're going to get that thing ready to go camping. Awesome. Thanks for joining us again. <laughs>